Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you how to solve differential equations by separation of variables. Alright, so there are four easy steps to solving differential equations using separation of variables. And these four steps are to create two equations, one with an x variable and one with a y variable. Two, create a proportion with dy and dx. Third, evaluate the integral on both sides. And four, solve for y. So let's see how these steps can be played to solve this differential equation here. All right? So this equation reads dy over dx equals 2y minus 1. So we're going to solve this differential equation. And our first step says to create two equations. Well, we're going to create two equations here. Now what I mean when I say one with an x variable and one with a y variable is that we should have two equations, g of x and h of y. These two variables are going to help us later on in the steps so that we can solve this differential equation, all right? So in this case, are there any x's in this part of the equation? Well, no, there aren't any x's, and that's okay. Because we can just simply write x to the 0, and we know x to the 0 to be 1. So that's going to be our x equation, all right? Now, are there any y's? Well, yeah. The main equation is y minus 1. So that's going to be our second equation. So now we have two equations, one with an x, right? In this case, x to the 0, which is 1. And here we have y minus 1, which is our y equation. All right, so step 1 is good. Step 2, create a proportion with dy and dx. So now that we have these two equations, we're going to go here, and we're going to write dy over dx is equal to, well, 1 times y minus 1. And now we're going to create a proportion in that we're going to have both dy and dx as numerators. All right. So in order to do that, we're going to treat dx as a quantity. And we're going to multiply both sides by dx. Mm -hmm. So we have this now. Right? And they're being multiplied, obviously. Right? So. Now we're going to remove all the y's on the other side, because we essentially want y's and x's on either side. Boom. And now we have dy over y minus 1, which is equal to 1 times dx. All right, and now we have completed step 2 of the process. So now we have this. So what we're going to do here now is evaluate the integral on both sides. So we're going to evaluate the integral for the y side. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 1 over y minus 1 dy. And I'm going to evaluate this side as the integral of 1 dx. All right? So we have to keep in mind that these aren't definite integrals. These are indefinite integrals, all right? Which means that when we find the antiderivative of each of these sides, we're going to have to add a constant c, all right? So from here, this one is kind of hard, so let's start with this one. The antiderivative of 1 is just x. So we have x, and since it's an indefinite integral, we're going to add plus c1. On this side, well, 1 over an equation, or 1 over a quantity, in this case y minus 1, we know that 1 over anything, its antiderivative is probably ln. So ln of y minus 1. And this makes sense because even if we reverse the chain rule to double check, the derivative of y is just 1. So this works out. And we're going to put plus c2. Now we're going to solve for y. So we're going to subtract c2 on both sides. This cancels out. And c1 minus c2, well, they're both constants. So we can denote them as just one constant, x plus big C. And on the left side, we have ln y minus 1. And we write them as absolute value signs because they take into account the whole domain, all right? Now, we have to solve for y, so we're going to continue solving for y. Well, how do we cancel ln? Well, we put this whole thing as a power of e. And the same thing here. To cancel out the lns. And now we just have y minus 1 is equal to e to the x plus c. Right? And we know that with our exponential rules, we can write this as e to the x times e to the c. And e to the c is yet another constant, so we can just rewrite that as big C. Now, c in this case just represents an arbitrary constant, 
which means that it is just a plain out number. And e to the c, well, is just a number. And so we have e to the x, right? Because x is our variable, and we have c e to the x. And then we still have this absolute value sign, y minus 1, right? Now we're going to move this here. In order to get rid of the absolute value signs, we know that whatever's inside has to be equal to a negative or a positive version of the other side. So we're going to write y minus 1 is equal to plus or minus c e to the x. Because we know that anything, whether it's positive or negative, its absolute value will be this. Now we're going to add 1, just like we're solving regular algebra. And we have solved for y. So y is equal to plus or minus c e to the x plus 1. And that is our solution to our differential equation.